it's culminated in us being able to put out this new resource, which gives us over 80 million tonnes of, of mineralisation, running at about 0.9% nickel um, and lifting the overall contained nickel content to about 730,000 tonnes. So that's a pretty significant uplift from where we were. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm joined by Darren Gordon, who is the Managing Director of Centaurus Metals. Darren, uh, good to see you today, joining us yeah. from Perth. Um, you just so. released a, a quite a significant resource upgrade, your Jaguar a nickel project in Brazil. Um, can you give us some of the headline figures there? Yeah, look, I guess we, we've had a, a really successful uh, 12 months, and um, I guess it's culminated in us being able to put out this new resource, which gives us over 80 million tonnes of, of mineralisation running at about 0.9% nickel um, and lifting the overall contained nickel content to about 730,000 tonnes. So that's a pretty significant uplift from where we were um, previously. We had, it was already a big resource at 560,000 tonnes of contained nickel metal, um, you know, relatively shallow, open pitable, um, but the, the scale of this resource is, is really growing. And I think we're well on the way to becoming sort of world class. You know, by my definition is world class trying to get to uh, a million tonnes of contained metal. Um, if we can, can keep that growth profile that we've had for the last little while, then uh, there's no reason why we don't get to that level. Um, but yeah, overall, really pleased with the work that the guys have done and the, and the size of the resource that's come together. Mm. You've got a number of targets across your property uh, there, uh, you know, on Sopreta and then the Jaguar Central South West, Central Northwest, and then this Tigre deposit. Where, where's the drilling been focused um, over the last sort of uh, year? Yeah, look, it's been a combination of infield drilling across a number of those deposits. Uh, Jaguar South is the cornerstone to the project. It's probably got about a third of the resource. Um, Jaguar Central is definitely coming up there as far as size and scale goes. But really, there's been a lot of work on uh, things like Jaguar West, where we've been able to do some further infill work to be able to bring some of that min mineralisation into the indicated category. So I guess when you think about the project, it's been a combination of shallower uh, infill drilling allowing us to lift the component of the indicated category, uh, which is now, I think, sitting just under 400,000 tonnes of contained nickel metal. So, um, you yeah, know, that's, that's fantastic for us because that's leading us down the path of being able to use that to convert resources to reserves um, through the course of the definitive feasibility study. But we've also been able to do some step out drilling and um, I guess test some of these new downhole EM conductors that we've um, been able to identify at the project. And EM for us is a very powerful uh, exploration tool, generally shows we've got semi-massive and massive sulfides. Um, so as we've been drilling those, we've been able to hit more mineralization. And also Pret is a classic case of that, that we've had some targets there. We've been able to chase the mineralization at depth and show that there is continuity as we go deeper. So it's, I guess we've grown the resource in the indicated category in the shallower locations. Um, we've also been able to do some work to, I guess, increase the confidence at some of the initial uh, deeper locations we had, but then extending the inferred component as we've actually drilled uh, deeper down. So. Yeah, you know, we're, we're probably drilling a few holes now that are around 500 metres, but in nickel terms, that's still relatively shallow. Um, Tigri that you referred to was a new discovery that we made during the year. Um, we've been able to convert that very quickly into resources, only in the inferred category at the moment. But I think we made a discovery in sort of August or something like that, and we've been able to quickly drill it um, and turn that into resource. So really pleased that the geological model is working. And I guess when you look at that and you take a step back, you go, well, yeah, we've really been exploring the whole area um, and the resource growth has come across the board. Mm. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of the drilling was quite shallow and then you've had some more drilling at, at depth and some success at depth. Um, how do these new findings sort of feed into your sort of potential uh, mine design, pit design? Yeah, look, uh, I think at the moment it, we, we have a feeling that as we've found more resource, um, we run optimizations on that. It looks like the pits will get deeper. Um, yeah, we've obviously still got to do that work through the course of the uh, definitive feasibility study. Um, but those deeper locations where we've hit mineralization is giving us the confidence that the mineralization is there. 
we run the optimization on that, um, you know, different economics and all of a sudden you've got pits that are bigger than what they were before. I think during the course of the scoping studies that we completed earlier in the year, um, we were very conservative on our assumptions on those optimizations. And I think what we're seeing now gives us a lot more confidence um, as to where these things will go. But you know, still fundamentally, I think there's uh, over half a million tonnes of contained nickel in the top 200 metres. So there's a lot of metal that we're going to see coming out in open pitable uh, locations when this project's up and running. Mm. I mean, as you mentioned, you did you did some scoping studies early in the year. I think it was back in uh, March, and then an updated one in May. But then you've mm -hmm. had this this further drilling. So, um, you know, what are you planning to do with these with these new findings? Will you be putting them into a new scoping study or or, or a DFS or what what, is, what are the plans for that? Yeah, look, I guess when we looked at the scoping study, particularly the one at the end of the May, at the end of May, which was for the production of uh, nickel sulfate, um, really gave the board confidence that we could progress uh, through to definitive feasibility study. So we're really in that phase, and um, we've made some comments into the market about the work that we've been doing around that. You know, looking at the process flow sheet, doing optimization trade-off work. Um, but yeah, we won't be putting out new scoping studies or anything like that. It's really through the course of 2022, completing the definitive feasibility study work. And a key part of that is going to be to do a, another resource, probably the middle of 2022, um, which will have more infill drilling completed so that we've got the maximum measured and indicated resource that we can convert to reserves as we do the definitive study. So we'll draw a line in the sand after the, the next resource, middle of next year, and that'll be the basis for completing the definitive feasibility study and then reporting all reserves. Mm. And after all these activities, you know, how's, how's the bank balance looking? Uh, and uh, you know, how's the fundraising environment been for, for, for Nickel Projects in 2021? Yeah, look, I, th I think it's fair to say that uh, nickel companies have had a pretty good run of it in 2021. Um, I expect that to continue in 2022. And, you know, we're already seeing, you know, there's a number of transactions that are sort of going around in the market at the present point in time. Um, so I don't think there's going to be any uh, shortage of investment support for uh, nickel stories, particularly nickel sulfide stories that have a low carbon footprint like we do here in Brazil. Um, so that will be uh, good for us. We've got, we had about uh, $16 million at the end of the September quarter. Obviously, it's been drawn down during the quarter. Um, we're still able to do all of the drilling that we're, we've got planned at the moment, um, obviously going through uh, metallurgical test work, optimizations, trade-offs. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look at what we need to do in the market sort of going through uh, 2022. But right now, we're, we're still pretty comfortable at that, you know, when and if we need to go back to the market that we'll be able to do so. Hmm. And in addition to this uh, sort of potential DFS you're going to be doing in, in 2022, uh, where are you at with all the sort of permitting and environmental approvals for the project? Yeah, look, so we lodged the environmental impact assessment uh, for the project back in August. Um, and so we're working through the process that we have there in Brazil. It's a three-stage process. First stage is to get that uh, environmental impact assessment approved, which will give us a preliminary licence. And that really is the key approval process that we need to get through on the environmental side. We'd expect that that comes through probably August, September next year. Uh, from there, we will then lodge what they call an installation license application. Um, and we're looking to get that uh, sort of in the second quarter of 2023. So we've, we've got a pretty good handle about what the timeline should look like. Uh, it's still probably the time determining factor for us to first production, but you know, the, the guys that are running that for us in Brazil have a lot of experience with getting approvals through in the Carajas region in particular, but also in our company um, having um, approved our iron ore project in the past. So, so that's going along well. Um, we've lodged an updated mining lease application um, just at the beginning of November. And you know, the, the technical approval of that probably comes through in the first half of next year, but the formal grant of the mining lease will only come once we've got the installation license under the environmental approval process. So we've got a really good handle on what we need to do. Obviously, we've got to keep working with the agencies and you know, uh, keep the pressure on for the delivery of these things in a timely manner. Um, but you know, we're very confident that uh, we can do that. Mm, excellent. Well, it sounds like you've had a, a pretty successful year so far. Um, and, uh, you know, best of luck for the year ahead in 2022 as you, as you work through all these uh, different stages of getting the project up and running. But uh, thank yeah. you very much, uh, Darren, for joining us today and giving us an update on Centaurus Metals. 
Yeah, good on you, Leo. Really appreciate it. And uh, Merry Christmas to everyone uh, who's listening. Cheers. Thanks.